To prepare a meal of grayling, the North's great sporting fish, you have to do more than just cook it. There has to be the right, perfectly clear freshwater stream. Grayling won't tolerate pollution or even sediments. Copper Creek's ideal. It's on the upper Charlie River, which flows into the Yukon. This area doesn't have roads, so the first step is to hire a helicopter or air taxi out of Circle, the northernmost end of the U.S. highway system. After ice breakup in May until early June or late in August are good times to fish grayling along the Yukon's tributaries. The canoe ride is the next ingredient. The entire Charlie River system is a designated wild river. People make the 88-mile float to the Yukon or go 63 more miles on the Yukon down to Circle. Circle and Eagle were very active towns during the gold rush. The whole region is rich with the history hidden in these miners' cabins and relics. The next step is to catch a nice grayling. Let a good black gnat or nymph fly drift the waters into the mouth of the grayling. Don't set the hook too hard. Grayling have a tender mouth and may fight. The world record is six pounds, though the average Yukon fish will be about two. They're the only Alaska game fish that looks like this, with the high dorsal fin. A good camp is another important ingredient in the grayling recipe. Some parts of the Charlie River can get rapidly flooded after a storm. While one chef cleans the fish, the other should have the fire ready. What makes the recipe gourmet is that we get the fish to the grill so fresh. The skill required to fry up the fish wouldn't trouble anyone. A truly unmatched seasoning comes from the location of this meal. It adds a lot to be more than a thousand miles upriver in the interior of Alaska. The flavor of this wilderness can't be caught, cooked, or exported. It can't even be described.